Hi everyone, welcome to episode three of the Break Vape podcast. I am your host, Tammy Ernst. I am a life coach and a former vapor. I coach on vaping, stress, mindset, and goals. If you would like to get coached, please introduce yourself and the struggles that you are dealing with in a quick email. The email address is hello at breakvapes.com. That's hello at breakvapes with an S dot com. To really quit vaping, you have to stick to a decision and change the way that you think. That is why each week I will be giving you tips and tricks on how to quit vaping for good. Thank you guys so much for all of the support around this podcast. I have gotten a ton of emails from listeners like you whose stories and frustrations they have to share around vaping. I have also gotten a lot of requests for private one-on-one coaching, which is my absolute passion. I wish there were enough hours in the day to coach each and every one of you individually, but spaces for the rest of November are filling up quickly. So if you would like to sign up for coaching before the holidays, make sure you reach out and send an email to hello at breakvapes.com. So how is everyone today? I hope you guys are doing amazing and are getting very curious about how to quit vaping for good. I'm doing great today. I just got back from a quick weekend trip to Scottsdale, Arizona which is one of my all-time favorite places. I'm back home now in Houston, Texas, recording this episode for you. But when I wrote the outline, I was sitting in this cute little picturesque cafe right in front of Camelback Mountain, sipping on coffee and thinking about you and how I can be a resource for you guys on how to quit vaping for good. Those of you who know me really well know that I love, love, love to travel. I love nature and yoga and being addicted to vaping just did not mesh well with the vision that I had for myself of being a healthy person. Scottsdale is definitely one of my happy places. I got to do some hiking on Camelback Mountain and really just got to reset and connect with nature. Hiking just always pleasantly surprises me because I always think that it's going to be easier than it is. I don't know if this happens to some of you guys out there, And then I wind up challenging myself because it winds up being way harder than I anticipated. (laughs) I love it, especially now that I can hike and not want to vape. A couple of years ago, I did an incredible hike outside of Seattle called Rattlesnake Ledge. And even though it is considered a moderate hike, it was a tough one for me. It's a four mile round trip hike with an elevation gain of about 1,160 feet with incredible views from the summit of the mountains and a beautiful lake below. It was just gorgeous and it was weird to feel so connected to nature but also feel so unhealthy because I wanted to vape when I got to the top. So fast forward to the hike I just did in Scottsdale and I am just so grateful that now I feel very healthy and connected to nature when I hike. And instead of beating myself up all the time for vaping, now I thank myself for quitting. And you are going to also, we're gonna get you there to the point where you guys have quit vaping and then you look back and you just thank yourself for feeling so healthy. We are going to get into all kinds of tactics on how to quit vaping for good, and we'll have some more lighthearted conversations on this podcast because I want to help you guys get to that blissful point after you quit where you thank yourself and really prioritize your health. I know so many of you have emailed me and asked how to quit right away, and we'll get there, I promise. But for now, I think the most important thing to do is to bring awareness to the fact that vaping is deadly and to get the word out. So last week, we talked about popcorn lung and we ended with some stories from real people who learned the hard way how dangerous vaping is. One of the gals who shared her story wound up being diagnosed with E-Valley and she never even knew that was a thing. If you didn't listen to episode, episode two, guys, Um, on popcorn lung, then make sure you go back and listen to that episode because popcorn lung and e-valley are two of the biggest diseases that are important to be educated on when it comes to vaping. So what is e-valley? What am I even talking about? e-valley is an acronym. It is spelled E-V-A-L-I and it stands for e-cigarette or vaping use associated lung injury. I'll say that again, e-cigarette or vaping use associated lung injury. E Valley. So in 2019, it used to be called uh, VAPI, or VAPI, V A P I, which stands for Vaping Associated Pulmonary, Pulmonary 
illness. The new name eValley is in response to an increased percentage of severe lung illness cases related to using e-cigarettes and vape products. There are many different kinds of vapes out there like flavored nic nicotine, um, non-flavored nicotine, there's even zero nic vapes, CBD, and THC. Uh, THC vapes that are typically sold in states are, are typically sold in states where marijuana is legal. Uh, well, what about those states where marijuana is illegal, you might ask? Don't worry. Big Tobacco has you covered and will help you destroy your health with a vape called Delta 8. Delta 8 has just enough THC to be right under or at the legal limit. So even though these vapes do have THC additives, they are illegal and can be found just about anywhere vapes are sold. For those of us who have tried Delta 8, you may have noticed that it is way harsher than an ordinary nicotine vape. And by harsher, I mean that it causes you to cough really, really hard. And a lot of people sneeze as well. I don't know if this happens to you, but it definitely happened to me. And I don't know, I'm just curious if vaping has caused you to sneeze, shoot me an email, let me know. Anyway, for those of you who only use a nicotine vape, don't tune out because vaping in any sense can be the cause of e -Valley. The primary cause of e -Valley has been pointed out by health officials to be an additive in some THC vapes called vitamin E acetate. Again, vitamin E acetate is the primary but not the only cause of e -Valley. In fact, according to Bloomberg, researchers at John Hopkins University found that vaping exposes users to around 2,000 chemicals, and a quick Google search will show that some of these chemicals include formaldehyde, pesticide, acetone, ultra-fine particles, volatile organic compounds, and heavy metals such as nickel, tin, and lead. Who can say yuck? So let's talk about the symptoms the diagnosis and the treatment of e -Valley. Symptoms tend to be very similar to many other respiratory diseases and include shortness of breath, fever, chills, coughing, coughing up blood, vomiting, diarrhea, dizziness, rapid heart rate, and chest pain. You guys, so far, 68 people in the United States of America have died from e -Valley. It is still so new that there is not a single test to, di to diagnose e -Valley. Diagnosis is mostly a process of elimination. All doctors can do right now is take the symptoms into consideration, evaluate a patient's history of e-cig and vaping usage, and they may have to take a chest x-ray or a CT scan to see if there are hazy spots on the lungs. These hazy spots are called opocytes and indicate tissue damage. You guys, this is important. e -Valley is so new and unpredictable that there isn't a go-to treatment or a cure. All doctors can do is to try different treatments like antibiotics, antivirals, and corticosteroids to help fight inflammation in the lungs. Many patients are hospitalized and placed on a ventilator. And if that wasn't scary enough, something that truly terrified me when I found out all of this information is that many patients are actually relapsing and even dying, dying soon after being discharged from the hospital, meaning that they went in, they got some kind of treatment, they went home, they had a relapsing event and may have come close to death or dying. For that reason, doctors recommend that all patients, regardless of severity, schedule a follow-up appointment with a pulmonologist within 48 hours after being discharged from medical care. To date, guys, there is currently no cure for e -Valley or popcorn lung. With cigarettes, your lungs can actually heal themselves back to the point of a non-smoker's after a significant amount of time. I think it's for this reason that many people probably assume that the same is true for vaping, and that is 100% false. When it comes to the damage done by popcorn lung and e -Valley, it's permanent. Neither of these devastating lung diseases are currently curable. My heart really goes out to all of the victims of vaping who are dealing with these lung diseases, and I use the word victim intentionally because even though vaping is a choice, consumers are manipulated into thinking that vaping isn't that bad, which is 200% wrong. At least with cigarettes, tobacco com companies were finally forced to put a warning label on the outside of cigarette packs to inform consumers that cigarettes are harmful. My, Actually, I saw one of these in... I think it's in the UK and in the UK, England, there is a cigarette pack that had 
big, huge red letters, all capitals, and it simply said, smoking kills. That's, that's my favorite one. Not only do vapes not have any kind of warning label on them like that, they take the manipulation even further by branding vapes with tasty flavors, colorful packaging, and even cool lights that are activated by inhaling. I had a vape one time called a party bar. Well, winding up in the hospital, depending on a ventilator to breathe, wasting tens of thousands of dollars on medical care, and scaring the bananas out of my friends and family, if I even lived, does not sound like a party to me. And I'm sure it doesn't sound fun to you either. So let's take charge of our health so that we can do things that are actually fun. My fun thing over this past weekend was hiking. Sometimes my fun thing is to go dancing at a music festival, go four-wheeling, skiing, rollerblading, mountain biking, rock climbing, playing cards, brunch with my girlfriends, sleeping in late, volunteering, playing dollies with my daughter. My list goes on and on. And for each fun thing that I can think of, I can find a fault if I bring vaping into that situation. Even if that situation involves drinking alcohol in any sense, right? Because almost every situation is socially acceptable with a little bit of booze. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? From the rare relaxing beach Mai Tai to the more common wine or champagne with the girls or bourbon or beer with the guys, etc., etc. If we choose to partake in it, alcohol seems to be all around us and drinking and smoking for many of us just go hand in hand. The problem with that is after the party, the get together, or whatever social event you went to, after you vape and drink, well, soon the situation for the drink is over, but the vape stays with you hour after hour, day after day, year after year, in a vicious cycle. And I'm not even talking about alcohol addiction here. That is a whole separate topic because there is a distinction between alcohol enjoyment and alcohol dependency. Anyways, I digress on the topic of alcohol. We were talking about what our fun thing is and how we would rather be doing that than laying in a hospital bed hooked up to a ventilator because we chose to keep vaping. So what is your fun thing? Think about it. I would love to know what your fun thing is. Please leave a comment below the podcast episode or send me an email. And I would love to hear what your fun thing is all about and how vaping would not be appropriate in that situation. That's going to do it for today, guys. I am so glad that we covered Popcorn Lung and Ivali over the last two episodes because I have talked to so many people who vape and they have no idea that these deadly diseases even exist. So please spread the word and I will see you guys on the next episode. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you or someone you know is struggling with how to quit vaping for good and would like to be coached, please send an email to hello at breakvapes.com. That's hello at breakvapes with an S.com. See you next week.